Good morning, everyone. Let's see. And we are live. Sorry about that. Seven seconds of silence. Um, <laughs> it's so slow sometimes. So today um, I want to show you guys how I make a uh, semicolon pendant uh, just using a regular silver plated spoon. Um, if you hop on, say hi in the chat for me. I'm going to try and keep this all working out here. Stop the autofocus. There we go. Um, and send this. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to do the whole thing beginning to end. I'm over here. <laughs> um, so I haven't polished it or anything yet. Um, I have a couple of things that I've made here. So this is just a piece of window framing, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, it's a block of wood. Um, I drilled some holes in here when I was originally doing that. But then I made this little system here. And what this allows me to do because whenever you're using these step bits, they're kind of graduated. Uh, they come in a lot of different sizes. Ugh. I mean, this is just massive. <laughs> it is the spoon. <laughs> okay. So, um, but with these step bits, sometimes they'll catch and it will try and rip this out of your hand. Same thing in the drill press, um, even using just the regular drill bit, a lot of times it will catch and then try and flip it around. So what this does is I put my spoon in there and it keeps it from sliding. The drill turns this way and that makes this lock in against this post and it can't go past this post. So easy rig. I've got this big hole dug out here. Um, I've had big spoons in here, little spoons in here, and the hole kind of keeps growing. As long as we have this end, most of your spoons will all be able to work with this. Um, we do have to make two small holes first, um, but I'm gonna show you how I prep these okay hi Zach I gotta remember to look up so what I'm using right now is called blue magic metal polish cream this is uh, for chrome aluminum and mag wheels um, what I do there's not a ton of tarnish on this, but I mean, it's normal, normal tarnish. I'm just going to take a small little dab of this, like small. I'm just going to rub it on it. The most we want to do is we want to get the inside of the bowl because that's the hardest part to get. So it's only been a couple of seconds. find the spot on my shirt okay so I just rubbed it on and that got most of it off already there's the back done and there's the front quick and if you stick with the spot but I got the oh there it is so this stuff does go a long ways I'm good Zach Zach's in my living room about 20 feet away <laughs> all right so that's done uh, 
We're going to need a spoon. We're going to need something to draw with. Bring it up here just a touch. Okay. Uh, I like these little Sharpie fine point markers. Um, this is going to be for making our semicolon part glasses step bit. This bit is one side has mark. There it is. <laughs> I can't read. All right, let's see. So this is a half inch bit at its biggest point. We're not going to go quite that big, I don't think. No. Um, it's been a while since I made one of these. Uh, first we're going to um, flatten this out. We're going to do that over here in the press. I have all, everything set up. I'm making my daughter's wedding <clears throat> or her engagement ring um, band not band uh, guard so I'm rolling out a lot of silver um, so I've kind of mounted everything to my bench here so I apologize for the cluster but it seems to be working for that um, let's go over here to the press Okay, so can you guys hear me okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we have our spoon. I bend them from the back. So what I just did was I just flattened this out. I took this little piece right here that was really bent and I made it flatter. That's all I did. Um, so for my block, I want to keep the tip of the fork on my block. I'd like to get a bigger block, but this is what I have for now. I'm just going to come down. So right there, it bent. I call that the first drop. I bump, bump it up, not quite to the tip, Come back, final bend, and then do the tip. Nice and flat, no real ripple. All right, that was hard. So there is this tiny little ripple in here. And it's not really a ripple, it's just not super, super flat. I'm just using the corner of my handle or of my my mallet here because I really want to just drop in those spots. Awesome. Hey Zach, can you hear yourself for the TV? Through my speaker. All right, so we are flat here and we're actually going to uh, put in our two marks. They're about half an inch apart maybe. So we're going down, we're gonna make our circle proportion wise, it's about this big. Come on. There you go. So it'll be like this size. Something like that. So we're just going to go, what I'm looking for is down the middle. So you don't have to do this first part. Okay, thank you, Zach. Uh, you don't have to do this first drill, but I like to have a hole for the pilot. Come on. Sorry about you being sideways. 
Oh, I gotta turn the autofocus back on. Do, do, do. Sorry if any of that was fuzzy before. Oh, I gotta put my glasses on. I can't see, they're fuzzy. Focus there. Okay, that's clear. All right, shut the autofocus off so you guys don't get sick. Wipe my goggles off here. Glasses. Okay, so we have our two holes now. We're going to put our spoon in here. And I've got this hooked up to my drill. Like I said, it's been forever since I've made these. I'm pretty sure that this mark I made in black um, is where I need to stop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's set to go up eight sizes to that black. So we'll just start here. looks about right um, you can also take your uh, beeswax or lube and put it out on here help it cut a little better <sighs> so these were just a little close should put my my dots a little bit farther apart but there is still separation in there. You're going to have flashing on the back side here. Just put this back in here and just real lightly go around it. Now we're nice and flush. Um, I'm not going to sand this down right yet because we're going to make our mark here. I got my laptop back today for the weekend. Okay. So I like to go from the middle. And then this edge. So we're just trying to make it look proportionate. So I figured this is about the size of the hole. So even if I cut it down to there, we'll be doing okay. Put that back in its home. I might grab my jeweler's saw. We'll get our spoon put on here. Yeah, actually I'm gonna cut the head off here. So those are 14 inch, uh, just ace bolt cutters. Take my saw here, oops. Put it through the bottom hole. All right, let's switch this guy up. We're done with it. I normally do a whole bunch of these at one time, but since I stopped mass producing everything, we are, uh, I'm just doing one or two at a time. Where are my books? There we go. All right, so this is our handmade bench pin. And we're just going to find our wax. There we go. So what I do is I push this against the, the pin. You can see it real well there. That kind of pins my blade where I want it. And once I get the hole started, then I can come off that edge. Okay. 
So there I've stopped. Come back to the middle here. I'm going to pull it up against where I want it. Bring it out. So watch your finger here. Make sure it doesn't go over this, this end piece here. I sliced my finger pretty good a couple of years ago. The blade came through and went off maybe a quarter inch further than I thought it was going to. And I cut my finger pretty good. So right down, just a little turn. All right, let's go back here. We'll finish this off. Come on. It should be through. There we go. Let's try and clean up that edge. All right, so we have our semicolon here. I'm just gonna put it on the buffer and get this black off of here so I can see what the hole actually looks like. All right. Let's take this. And I'm going to take my sandy disc and I'm just going to go over the edges to just make them nice and smooth. So we're just trying to get off this little burr edge on here. trimmed off here. Okay, nice and smooth. Let's get the back side now. Taken. You just want to kind of even this out back here. This little spot right here. So it doesn't always get real Real nice and clean there when the saw goes through. So that putting this upside down and spinning that step bit uh, really makes the cleanup so much easier. I don't know if I like that enough. Uh, I'm going to bring you over here to the sander. Got a nice clean edge here. All right, we gotta put another hole in here. I always try and go from the front to the back. Woo. Because the biggest part we're gonna have to clean up is the back. We'll just put our hole in there. Oh, that drill bit is one sixteenth of an inch cobalt um, drill bit. So I've got my hole. You can see I've got a little bit of flashing here. I don't got to turn on the autofocus again. All right, so I'm just going to buzz this off. Just a tiny, tiny bit on the front. 
and we're going to clean up this little bit here. All right, and that's ready for a jump ring. Um, all right, so we just put a jump ring in there. And this is all done. I'm gonna make another one. I don't like those holes being as close as they are. Um, let me grab a... Is this one long enough? Yes, it is long enough to fit in my block. That's a big spoon. Okay. So I'm going to flatten this out real quick. I'm going to tap on this again. This guy. Punch our holes in here. I do have a template that I made. Let's get that one center. And we're going to drop down here this time. Let me just double check that's not the same spot. drawer. We're going to make our small pilot hole here. There's one and two. Let's get this guy in here and we'll make our holes again. Sorry about any of the background noise. And these do warm up very fast, so watch your fingers. <laughs> Give it a second. So we're back to this point again. Hi Lou, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. I can almost see grass in my yard, so that's nice. I've got one little burr. Oh, there it went. Okay, it just came off there. All right, so now we're going to do... Ah, my loop. We'll get our bench pin but put back in here. And we need our saw. 
I'm going to draw my semicolon here and make sure that you're doing it on the front side. I've done this too many times where I just got into it and I make this and if I drew this on here right now it's going to be backwards whenever I flip it over because this is the front. So we want to make sure that we get this. I want to end right here. See if that looks right. That looks pretty good. Send this face up onto our uh, saw here. And I'm going to get this to keep focus right where it's at because it will keep focusing and focusing and focusing. Okay. All right, here we go. Like I said before, I'm pinning this against the, the uh, wood where I want my saw to go in. A little bit of beeswax, candles, just about everything will work for this, for lubricant. So I'm coming straight down about halfway and then I'm going to turn it. Okay, so there's that one. We're going to put it to this side and start straight down. Get this through here. And now we're going to point it right at where we stopped. There we go. Clean up this. So I'm just going to take and put this on the buffer for a second. I just want to see where the line actually was or where our cut mark actually was so it looks like we're pretty good there uh, we will take our sanding drum here and I'm just gonna take off these light little edges that are on here now So we've got a little dimple right here. We want to take that out without scratching the face. So make sure you have a good hold of it. This little point here is always the sharp spot for this. I like that. We'll get the back here. There's that. We'll get this tip. And I always check everything with my fingers. I don't want anything sharp. All right, so we're good there. We're going to take and clip this guy off. Um, I like to trim them up here. There you go. I like to put them right about here because if you can't tell it's a spoon, at least you'll see part of the handle. So we're going to trim it up. This is my 14 inch. Um, I think these are from Ace. Yep, they're from Ace. Another little trick, if it doesn't cut all the way through, you can clip your... Okay, I'm gonna make a focus. There. 
if it doesn't cut through and it's really hard to break apart, I put it back in the jaws and then use that as leverage to bend. It takes a whole lot less energy to take that off and make it the right size. So we'll come over here. Another thing to watch out for whenever you're making these is um, oftentimes there will be a cut mark on here. Yeah, I'll just do it on this one. There will be a cut mark here. It's like a little crimp down from where it got pressed together. Unless you're looking for it, oftentimes I wasn't getting the back sanded down here very much. Okay, stop focusing. <laughs> uh, so just make sure that you get this back. It just needs to cut down just a little bit to get that to where it doesn't look like it was cut and everything's cleaner. Uh, let's put our, our little hole in here. And then I'll polish it. Get our wax on the drill bit. Do, do, do. Get the back here cleaned off. And remember to go in through the front, you get a lot less uh, flashing on that side. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Let me get this thing to autofocus. So you can just kind of see scratch marks in the top of that. That's from the sandpaper, whatever, from the uh, belt sander. What that does is it leaves those, I call them tool marks. They are tool marks. Um, even if they're not really seen a lot, I'll still take my my drum and just kind of clean those up. It only takes a second, but it makes a big difference down the road. Let's turn the focus back on. See how clean it is now? Nice and shiny. I like that. I like it clean and neat. I'm just going to actually take my, uh, my metal polish again. Uh, this is Blue Magic. Um, I got it at Walmart. I think it was like six or seven bucks. Just a little dot. All right, um, it works great. It also acts as a protectant. Okay, so. I've got one that's pretty deep right here. So I'm just gonna put it on this guy. I'm gonna hold my breath for a second. Here, I'll bring you over. <laughs> Come on, there we go. All right, so I've taken <laughs> Yep. It took me a second the first time whenever you popped on, Lou, and I'm like, oh yeah, attention to detail. Instead of OCD, ATD. 
right? So the red makes it that shiny. The white is the finest one that I have. And it's on this big poofy brush here or wheel. Hi, Donald. There we go. Now we're really nice and shiny. So we'll put a jump ring in this. I think they are right here. Yep. Uh, this is a what size jump ring? I think it's like an eight. We'll find out here in a second. Um, these are stainless steel. I take my two curved nose pliers. I take my curved nose pliers, put this guy in. I was using the 10 millimeter and they were really big. They worked, but they were really big. It's a shaky day. Okay, so I'm just going to open these up a little bit more. There we go. No, thank you. Try and get you guys here to where you can see. Get the focus put back on. All right, that looks good. So for these jump rings, you want to make sure you hear them click. That's gonna be as close as you can get them. I like to have a little bit of tension, trying to push them apart. So I've been looking at <laughs> through my magnifying glasses for a couple of days so I can hardly even see this. <laughs> All right, so there's that. We'll grab our chain here. So these chains, this is a two millimeter uh, stainless steel rope chain. There we go. We were using the silver plated for a long time and they just kept tarnishing. So I wanted something that was still nice and shiny, but would stay that way. And stainless became the answer. Also, we haven't had anybody complaining of irritation from the silver plate or their next turn black from the, uh, the base metal underneath. So there's our semicolon pendant. Um, and this is ready to go out. I might buff it up a little bit more just to get my fingerprints off. Um, but that's, I like this one a lot better than the other one. Where'd I put that? So definite difference. This was our oh, this was our first one. See how they're close together, and it just doesn't quite look right. But the second one we did has a bigger gap, and the uh, this part <laughs> uh, that looks a lot better, cleaner. All right, so I think that will do it for this video. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, we're 
have a bunch of videos coming out and some videos that I did a long time ago but I finally got rotated around because for some reason my phone kept recording them upside down so once I got them transferred over to my computer I had to transfer them the other way but it's a, a pain in the butt anyways yeah yeah definitely a lot better um, so I will be spending the next two weeks my daughter's getting married in two weeks that's crazy to me um, I've been making her a guard which is basically two rings that go around her um, wedding band or her engagement ring so this is her engagement ring oh, let me focus that okay so this is her wedding ring this is her wedding ring face up and this top ring and the bottom ring that's what I'm making no the ring isn't done yet I got a bunch of pieces for it made and then I found out that the way I was heating up the rose gold was not going was not good and it was basically melting off the pieces or the the gold plating because it's gold filled um, and I was treating it more like uh, normal sterling or gold but I did get some pieces finished <laughs> these little marquee pieces they are six millimeters long or the stones anyways are six millimeters and then I got one of the ovals done before I ran out of solder this is like super super tiny um, this one's four millimeters long I mean it's the size of a wrinkle on my finger <laughs> super tiny I just got a new toy my old goggles just weren't doing it so I got this guy five different magnifying and they just pop in and out uh, so that has already helped but all the work I did and the days that I spent making these thank you it this project has been the hardest thing I have ever made uh, as far as jewelry goes actually it might be one of the hardest projects I've ever done because I shake so much getting let me stop this thing from there um, I shake so much and these things are tiny 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 so I'm like trying to use my pick and stabilizing on everything and fingers out all over the place trying to get stable and now I have to start over completely um, the only things I don't have to remake are the rose gold rings that I made yeah uh, so it's in two weeks it took me four days about to get two of these marquee uh, bezels um, it was a definite challenge to get the right size and whenever it ended up where everything was shaped to be the right size and the way it was so uh, yeah definite challenge and now um, I have to remake the whole thing in sterling silver and we're gonna plate it with rose gold so I'll still be making it but she'll still get the color that she wants um, I ran out of solder because I had to make these pieces so many times uh, it was just I went through a lot of 14 karat silver or um, gold so I've made a couple rings this was my first real ring that I actually designed and made 
It's a labradorite stone. Uh, it has fancy bezel and let me get this focused. Um, focus on the ring. Nope, that's not the ring, that's me. Come on. There we go. Okay, I got it. Uh, so this, and what it is, is these are actually fork tines. The band is four total fork tines. Yeah, the stone, as soon as I saw this Labradorite, I had to buy it. The camera's not doing it justice. It's got this nice little blue-green hue to it. And the base is from a spoon. And I cut some holes out in it. Got my date on it, got my stamp on it. Um, it was, that one took me a little while, but it took me a little while because um, I was doing something I'd never done before uh, with the fork tines and I never made a bezel. I think I burned through, this is the third bezel. So I melted a hole in two of them. Um, then I made this guy and this is dichroic glass. Um, and I always try and put a hole or something on the back so that I can, uh, push the stone out if it, uh, if I don't like the way it fits or I still have to do something to it. And then this one is a peekaboo heart. So again, another Labradorite, nice and pretty, a little darker blue. And uh, I flared out the base of this. I used a flathead screwdriver to get those little uh, dimples in there. And then on the back, I put a heart so this was a lot of fun. Uh, and one, two, three. Yep. And the other ones I had were uh, Herkimer diamonds. Oh, I still have one. So this was my first prong setting. Yep. I've seen that too, Lou. Uh, I didn't have any dental floss though, so I was just, I like the patterns in the back. So this was my first claw setting. And this is a Herkimer diamond. It, very simple. It's locked in here. There's no glue. The prongs are holding it. Um, this was probably the easiest design for prongs. I basically, um, soldered them together and just soldered the ring to them and then flipped these up because the shape of the diamond is so awkward i had to mount each one tiny little bits to get it to hold it where i wanted it to to where it's not just fragile because it looks really fragile but it's it's really in there so i have experience with some rings but nothing like this. I've never really set stones. I mean, I've done, um, on a few videos, I've made uh, flush set sapphires and like the fork to puss and a couple of other things I've flush set stones, but that's basically drilling a hole, putting the, putting the stone in and then uh, running a pusher around the edge of it to get that little curve of metal over the top. This is nothing like that. These guys, I have to, one, make, make the side. And it's really small, <laughs> really small. Uh, and then I have to get the, the four prongs put on here. And basically the prongs, I make a U in the wire so it looks like this and I go up and around it where I want it to and I solder it on there 
and then I soldered the other one on there, actually doing both at the same time, but one loop is over the top of the other loop like this. And once I get it soldered, then I can cut off the base, sand it smooth. Um, I don't know how many times I remade the marquee bezels. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Uh, I think I, I definitely had a few days worth of time working on this and now I have to do it all over. I will also have to be or I'll have to learn how to pull wire. So I've got my sterling here. Here's a couple little pieces that I've turned into balls. Um, I'm just going to put those in the my rolling mill here. I'm fuzzy. Sorry about that guys. Yeah, two weeks to finish something that I've never done before or attempted. But I guess I have experience now with those bezels. So I'm going to be able to go through those a lot faster. And I'm used to working with the sterling. So that's no problem. And I have plenty of solder. I was supposed to have gold solder today, but the mail hasn't delivered it. I got my mail, but not the box. So, um, but yeah, two weeks. I'm, I'm nervous. She does have a backup just in case, but I have two weeks. I should be able to spend a few days working on this project. I don't think I'm going to do it live. Thank you, Lou. I know I will get it done and I know that she's going to love it. Um, I also get to learn electroplating. So, so that'd be fun because we're going to plate it rose gold. That's her favorite thing. Uh, the amount of rose gold I would need to roll out and make all the parts was over a thousand dollars. So we opted for plating um, for, I think it was like 80 bucks. Um, and I have all the electronics and stuff to do that. I know all about that. Um, I just have never done it before, but I've seen it done, which pretty much means I can do it because this thing up here just works. Uh, so I'm going to hop off here. I got to get started on this ring. I am recording it, so I'll be able to make a shorter collage video kind of thing later on. Um, and I'll get that posted on here. That way she can see me building her ring uh, forever. Or as long as YouTube lasts. <laughs> All right. So you guys have a great day. Uh, thanks for sticking around and hanging out with me. Um, I will probably hop on in a couple of days again and uh, just kind of give you an update where I'm at. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun, definitely a lot of work, but we'll get it done. So thank you guys. And remember, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Yes. Yeah. I, it's truly going to be an heirloom piece because I'm making the entire thing by hand. You too. Have a great weekend and I hope it stays sunny. Let's see. That was, it's sunny here. Uh, that was, oh yeah, that was you in Ontario. Is it Ontario, Canada or in Ontario, California? I didn't even know there was an Ontario, California until a few years ago. hope you guys all have a great day and I will see you next time hopefully in a couple of days or for you the next video Canada nice I live 45 minutes from Montreal um, in New York State so the borders like almost my backyard <laughs> and I still have six to eight inches of snow over my grass I'm sure you guys over there have a little bit more
So, ooh, I smell food. All right, have a great day.